All right, you asked and I listened, and we're gonna be doing a deep dive on jigsaw puzzles, specifically in Redbubble. So I'm gonna give you three tips in this video on how you can increase your chance of making a sale specifically for jigsaw puzzles. And I've also got a bonus tip, let's jump in. Okay, so let's talk niche marketing. You could go up to home and living, and you could go down here to jigsaw puzzles. This is not the best way to do it, but I'll show you just to start. You're gonna see here, it says 150,185 results. Now look, it depends on when you're watching this video, it could be more, but that's not a lot, right? However, this doesn't really seem to fit very well. What I would recommend that you do instead is you type in something like funny cat and then you search. So when you do that, funny cat jigsaw puzzles gets you 200,000 results. So it's like, well, wait a minute. Is there a lot of results or not a lot of results? So what I'd recommend you do is that when you're searching for something, you can type in, so for example, funny cat, and you're gonna get back 645,000 results. From there, go up to the home and living and then go to the jigsaw puzzles and type in funny cat. And now you can compare how many funny cat jigsaw puzzles exist versus funny cat designs overall. What you're looking for is a large disparity so that there's a niche opportunity for you with jigsaw puzzles specifically. Let's try another example. I'm gonna type in New York City, and we can see on Redbubble, this is a very popular niche, there's 103,915 results. But if I type in jigsaw puzzle, you're gonna see that amount goes down quite a bit. Now there's only 20,000 results. So my point is, when you're doing niche research, you don't wanna just search for the just the design if you're looking at making a jigsaw puzzle. So I'm gonna type in funny Irish, and we'll see there's 64,000 results. And if I type in puzzle, you'll see there's only 14,000 results, and these are jigsaw puzzles. Okay, so let's actually talk about the nuts and bolts of jigsaw puzzles. The dimensions for jigsaw puzzles is 9,075 pixels by 6201 pixels. You wanna make sure that whenever you're uploading, get the highest dots per inch. In other words, the highest quality, 300 DPI is typically a good way to go. Now I'm gonna jump in, instead of tip number one, I'm actually gonna give you the bonus tip first. So this is a major tip alert. Okay, and to show you this tip, I'm gonna go here to my account and I'm gonna go into add new work. From here, I'm gonna click upload new work. Okay, and I've uploaded a bare design, which is gonna be sitting on all sorts of different things, t-shirts, hats, graphic t-shirts, all sorts of weird, wild stuff. I'm gonna scroll on down to the jigsaw puzzle. We can see here, the jigsaw puzzle is not gonna be a great looking jigsaw puzzle because there's a ton of white space, right? So what I would recommend that you do, and this is the big bonus tip, is when I click on edit and I scroll on down, there's an option right here to replace my image. So I could make an image inside of Redbubble specifically for the jigsaw puzzle. I want to show you what an opportunity this is. So I'm just gonna go here to Home and Living and I'm gonna to go to Jigsaw Puzzles just to show you how there's a huge opportunity here. Instead of most relevant, I'm gonna to go to newest. And what that means is we can see now the newest designs that are not necessarily the best designs. So look, I wanna be very clear, I'm not making fun of any artist. I hope that that comes across in this video. I'm obviously championing artists, but I do wanna point out, like these ones here, for example, chances are very, very low that somebody's going to buy this. Now this is fan art, so this has actually been approved. I'm surprised by that because there's so much white space. I can't imagine, for example, spending $48 Canadian on a jigsaw puzzle that's mostly white tiles. You can see here, better designs, are designs that take up the whole jigsaw puzzle. So these are awesome designs right here because there's not just a ton of white space around them. So the bonus tip is that when you're uploading for jigsaw puzzles, make sure to go here to replace image and actually make a design specific for jigsaw puzzles. You can click the replace image and you can upload that. I'm in Photoshop, I'm gonna click file and new and I'm gonna set my width for 9075, I'm gonna set my height for 6201. My resolution is 300 DPI, which is the dots per inch or pixels per inch, and I'm gonna click OK. That's now my template for jigsaw puzzles. So here's an example of how you can scale up your jigsaw puzzle. I have a design here. I've got it actually from Creative Fabrica, which I'll put a link in the video description. You can see there's all these different awesome farm and animal designs. And what I'm gonna do with these designs is instead of just having it sitting here and just repeating as a pattern, that's not really gonna be that great because it makes for a boring jigsaw puzzle. Instead, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna put it like that. I'll then click the bunny and I'll make the bunny a bit smaller and I'll put the bunny over here. 
I'll take Mrs. Cow and I'll put them like this. And we've got a nice deer here. You get the idea, right? So there is my design now with a whole bunch of different animals that make up, just gonna move bunny over a little bit there and deer just a tiny bit over there. But you can see now I've made a, basically a pattern, but it's different animals. It's really a pastiche. So now I'm gonna add one more layer at the very bottom. I'm gonna make them cream colored here. I'm gonna pick a nice cream color background right like that. And I'm gonna go into paint bucket and I will fill in all the background. So there, that's a great looking jigsaw puzzle design because it's not just a repeated pattern, it's unique. Imagine if you're making this jigsaw puzzle with your family, oh, we've got a bunny over here, we've got a fox over here. It's not just all foxes or all giraffes, that's kind of boring. So this is not ideal. The first method that I walked through probably was better, but if you need to, make sure that you don't have a ton of white space here. So what you don't want to do is just have this little rinky dinky bear image sitting in the middle. Instead, you can choose a pattern like offset grid. That's probably better than nothing at all. And if you want, you can scale the image right down. You could scale the image up. I like this better because you'll notice there's these dotted lines inside the jigsaw puzzle and it's because there's different sizes available of jigsaw puzzles because if you purchase a jigsaw puzzle with smaller pieces you'll be using not the whole design if you purchase a jigsaw puzzle with larger pieces you'll be using the entire design another option with choose pattern is you can do a regular grid and that's another option as well again these are not ideal i would recommend not just having one item that's not really going to be great instead pick a pattern and here's a quick little bonus tip on how you can combat that boring white space. For example, I've got my hippopotamus design here. I'm gonna put him right in the middle. Now you've got an option here. You could duplicate them out if that's what you wanted to do. That's one option, that gets rid of white space. Or another option would be to put a background in. So here's an example. I've just got a wood panel and I'm just gonna put that in now as my background. And so my design could still be hippopotamus, I could do keywords, but in this case, I could make it sitting on top of the actual board. There's a great example. Now it looks like the hippopotamus is sort of burned into the wood. So that would be an example. I tried to make this as large as possible, but the wood makes it way, way more interesting than just having boring white or monochrome background. Okay, so let's go back to the start here. I've got my bear design. I'm going to scroll on down. You can see it looks pretty good here on a lot of different products like graphic t-shirts, phone cases, and so on. But when I get down to Jigsaw Puzzle, I want to make sure that this is unique. So I'm going to click Replace Image, and I'm going to upload something that is specific for a Jigsaw Puzzle. There'll be minimal white space, it'll be unique, and it won't just be the same design. And we can see there, I put a rainbow background in and I've got the bear sitting on Multiply in Photoshop. And so if somebody wants to buy this now, it's not just a picture of a bear. There's also all these different colors and that will really help me increase my chances of making a sale of a jigsaw puzzle specifically. I really hope you found this video walkthrough helpful. This is a deep dive tutorial on jigsaw puzzles. If you've got any comments, questions, if you've got a tip that maybe I missed, hey, throw it down in the comments section. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your Redbubble journey.